Welcome into, welcome into another edition of the Rocky Top Rundown, your one-stop shop for all things Tennessee athletics. I'm Scott Nappy. And I'm Joey Peterson. After finishing 18th in men's and 10th in women's during last season's NCAA tournament, the Tennessee swimming and diving team opened up their 2022 season with a win against UNC Wilmington. But this past weekend, the schedule got much more difficult as they welcomed NC State to Knoxville. The 13th ranked Vols battled in a 198 to 155 loss to the number four Wolfpack. And the number seven ranked Lady Vols also lost against the number four Wolfpack 207.5 to 140.5. For the men, Jordan Crooks took home first in the 50 meter freestyle matching his season best time of 19.36. And Gui Kuribe won the 100 meter free with a time of 43.36. Bryden Hattie swept the springboards with a career high score of 404.55 on the one meter he also won the three meter with a personal record. For the Lady Vols, Kristen Stagey had an impressive win in the thousand meter freestyle, her time coming out to be nearly 20 seconds faster than her previous top time from this season. Mona McSherry took home a first place win in the 50 meter free and second place in the 100 meter and 200 meter breaststroke. The Vols might have gone 0 2 in the meet, but they are competing against one of the best teams in the country. Up next for the Vols, they will travel to Louisville to face the 10th ranked swim and dive team on both men's and women's side. In addition to swim and dive, the Tennessee women's basketball team will start their season in just under two weeks when they face Carson Newman in an exhibition match on October 30th. There are lofty expectations for the Lady Vols who come to the season ranked 5th in the AP poll. Here's Ryan Sylvia with a preview for their season. Hi, I'm Ryan Sylvia with the Rocky Top Rundown, standing outside of Thompson Bowling Arena, the home of the men's and women's basketball team here at UT. And we are midway through October, meaning football season's in full swing and basketball season is right around the corner. So I sat down with Knox News' Cora Hall to talk about the upcoming Lady Ball season. Last year, Tennessee claimed third in the SEC and advanced all the way to the Sweet 16 as a four seed in March Madness before falling to Louisville. This year, they returned a lot of the key pieces that led to their success. You know, Jordan Horston is gonna be a leader once again on the team when it comes to scoring, when it comes to rebounding. Um, Kelly Harper has said a lot that she's had a really good summer and Kelly said that last year and she certainly um, had a great season after that. So I think, you know, just with her um, coming back from that elbow injury, she has been definitely itching to get back on the court. I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing how Tamari Key has improved over the offseason. She's still an anchor for that starting lineup, and I think she um, will continue to take steps this season like we saw her do last season. And then besides that, I want to say Marta Suarez um, looks great. She was out all last season with a foot injury, and just from the couple practices I've seen her in, um, just looks really, really good, um, can score at all three levels, going to be a great rebounder, great off the ball movement. Um, so I think she's a really underrated player to watch out for. On top of this heap of returning talent, this year's roster brings in four largely impactful transfers while also bringing in a five-star freshman. Jasmine Powell really stuck out because just the way that she runs point guard, I think is really going to be helpful for Tennessee. She makes decisions very quickly. You can tell that when the ball gets in her hands, she already knows where she's going. She's going to dribble, pass, do whatever she needs to do, but it's going to move quickly. You know, the ball is not going to get stuck. Obviously, Rakia Jackson is a very dynamic scorer, one of the best players in the SEC, probably going to be a first round draft pick for the WNBA. Um, but I think, you know, also Jillian Hollingshed is really intriguing just to see how they'll use her because she can do so many different things and she gives such a different look than Tamari or than Jasmine Franklin who's also a great addition to the roster and Justine is is going to definitely find her place I have no doubt about that she's already launching threes with a lot of confidence and that's something that they really need. At the head of the Lady Vols program is head coach Kelly Harper entering her fourth season. As a player for UT, she claimed three consecutive NCAA titles from 1996 to 1998. Now as the head coach, she hopes she can bring the Lady Vols back to glory. Kelly is a very personable um, coach. You know, she definitely um, is 
you because every coach can say they're like a player's coach or their players first but I think we've seen a lot of different ways in which Kelly truly is you know a player's first coach and um, that's one of the things that players always say about her you know like they know she cares about them they know she's been there before like that really I think carries a lot of weight for players that she has been in their position as a Tennessee Lady Vol. Expectations for this year's Lady Vols team are sky high as they entered the AP poll at number five and the SEC media's preseason poll at number two. I think, you know, Tennessee will, they should, like with the roster they have, with what Kelly showed she could do last season, I think they should stay in the top five all season. I think they should make it to the final four. I think the ceiling for this team is very, very high. And it's just kind of a matter of, can they get there? Can Kelly take them there? Can they get themselves there? Thank you, Cora. It should be a really exciting season right here on Rocky Top for the women's basketball program. But make sure you guys check back in this following Monday as I'll be sitting down with another reporter, this time to talk about the men's basketball team. For the Rocky Top Rundown, I'm Ryan Sylvia. Thanks, Ryan. One sport on campus that has already gotten started is our Tennessee Ice Balls, who took on Clemson this weekend at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum. It was the first matchup between the two teams this season. Let's get to the highlights. Clemson would strike first as Thomas Samuelson fires a wrist shot from the top of the circle to give his team an early 1-0 lead in the first period. The Ice Balls would quickly respond as Michael Constantino takes a nice pass and wrists it past the Clemson netminder to tie the game at 1. With a score tied at 7 in the third period, Drew King makes a nice pass to Ethan Priveman and he buries it into the net to put the ice balls up by one less than a minute later. Nicholas Carline takes a pass from King and buries it in the back of the net to seal the 9-7 victory for the ice balls at their home rink. The ice balls would also go on to defeat Clemson by a score of 4-2 on Sunday afternoon to sweep the weekend series. Up next, the Vols will face Kennesaw State back at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum on Thursday. After a big win on Saturday, the Tennessee Volunteer football team will be hosting UT Martin in a game that should be very one-sided. More importantly though, it's homecoming weekend for the University of Tennessee, and our very own Jazz Pal has more on the homecoming celebration. This year's homecoming is taking off with several fun events lined up. The Multicultural Student Life has put together events such as the Stomp Fest, the Homecoming Tailgate, a comedy show, in the freshman pageant. I attended this year's freshman pageant this past Tuesday to get a closer look at the talent and get some inside information on what students are most excited about in this year's homecoming events. All right, we're at the pageant right now and the performance was amazing, the consistency also. Their outfits was great, their personalities, and the questions they asked was very good. Um, a homecoming event we we're most excited for is the Stump Fest. Yeah, come on now. More so because we're ready to see everybody show up and show out what they can. Yeah, Battle of the Greeks, come on now. I really enjoyed the comedy show on yesterday. I laughed the entire time. Everybody was really funny. But something I'm looking forward to this week is my UTK drip page. is bringing everybody together and uplifting them in their outfits for homecoming. Um, I'm looking forward to the Stomp Fest, which is the um, sororities stomping and everything else. Yeah, so, the Stomp Fest. Yeah, right. The Stomp Fest, yeah. Along with the events mentioned today, the parade, the football game against UT Martin, and more are all happening this week. So get up and come celebrate the great University of Tennessee. Thanks, Jazz. Well, everybody, there are always plenty of sports and big matchups going on here on Rocky Top. And if you can't keep up with it all, don't worry. You can join us again next week for all the updates that you need. Until then, get out and support the Vols this week. For myself, Joey, and all of our crew, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.